Well, thank you, Judge. Welcome. We're happy to have you here. Uh, my friend from, uh, I'd just like to say a few words. My friend from Arizona emphasized yesterday that we have before us today two human beings, Dr. Ford and Judge Kavanaugh. They deserve, each of you deserves to be treated fairly and respectfully. We tried to do that with Dr. Ford earlier, and I think we succeeded. It's important that we treat Judge Kavanaugh fairly now, and it remains to be seen how that's going to work out. Judge Kavanaugh has been a federal judge for 12 years, and he's been a great federal judge on the second highest court in the nation. He's earned a reputation for fairness and decency. His clerks love him. His students, he teaches in law school as well, his students love him. His colleagues love him. This man is not a monster, nor is he what has been represented here in these hearings. We're talking today about Judge Kavanaugh's conduct in high school, and even then, and as a freshman in college, I guess, as well. Serious allegations have been raised. If Judge Kavanaugh committed sexual assault, he should not serve on the Supreme Court. I think we'd all agree with that. But the circus atmosphere that has been created since my Democratic colleagues first leaked Dr. Ford's allegations to the media two weeks ago, after sitting on them for six weeks, I might add, has brought us the worst in our politics. It certainly has brought us no closer to the truth. Anonymous letters with no name and no return address are now being treated as national news. Porn star lawyers with facially implausible claims are driving the news cycle. I hate to say this, but this is worse than Robert Bork, and I didn't think it could get any worse than that. This is worse than Clarence Thomas. I didn't think it could get any worse than that. This is a national disgrace, the way you're being treated. And in the middle of it all, we have Judge Kavanaugh, a man who until two weeks ago was a uh, pillar of the legal community. There's been no whisper of misconduct by him in the time he's been a judge. What we have are uncorroborated, unsubstantiated claims from his teenage years. Claims that every alleged eyewitness has either denied or failed to corroborate. I do not mean to minimize the seriousness of the claims. Yeah, they've been serious claims, but the search for truth has to involve more than bare assertions. Like Dr. Ford, Judge Kavanaugh deserves fair treatment. He was an immature high schooler, so were we all. That he wrote or said stupid things sometimes does not make him a sexual predator. I understand the desire of my colleagues to tear down this man at any cost. I do understand it, but let's at least be fair and look at the facts or the absence thereof. Guilt by association is wrong. Immaturity does not equal criminality. That Judge Kavanaugh drank in high school or college does not make him guilty of every terrible thing that he's recently been accused of. A lifetime of respect and equal treatment ought to mean something when assessing allegations that are flatly inconsistent with the course of a person's entire adult life. With those comments, Judge, I'd just like to ask you a few questions, if I can, about how, and if you can be short in your answers, it'd help me get through a bunch of them, about how this process has unfolded. When did you first learn of Dr. Ford's allegations against you? Uh, it was a week ago Sunday, one Washington Post story. Isn't that amazing? Did the ranking member raise these allegations in your one-on-one -on -one meeting with her last month? She did not. Did the ranking member raise them at your public hearing earlier this month? No. Did the ranking member raise them at the closed session that followed the public hearing? She was not there. Did the ranking member or any of her colleagues raise them in the 1,300 written questions that were submitted to you following the hearing? No. When was the first time that the ranking member or her staff asked you about these allegations? Uh, today. When did you first hear of Ms. Ramirez's allegations against you? Uh, in the last, in the period since then, in the New Yorker story. Did the ranking member or any of her colleagues or any of their staffs ask you about Ms. Ramirez's allegations before they were leaked to the press? No. 
When was the first time that the ranking member or any of her colleagues or any of their staff asked you about Ms. Ramirez's allegations? Today. I think it's a disgrace between Senator Coons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.